Although there are stories of demon today, but in the spiritual world really there are no demons. But when he manifests his pastimes in the material sphere, then by the arrangement of the Lord to actually experience his Virya Rasa, heroic Rasa, fighting Rasa, the Lord displays his pastimes as killing demons. It's mentioned that although there are several demons discussed in Bhagavatam, actually every day Krishna killed a demon. Every day he killed, only some of them are recorded. Every day it was his regular pastime before lunch to kill a demon and then relax and have a budget with everybody. Because he was enjoying with the Gopas and they were all, wow, my hero, I'll whistle and say, Whoosh. And they will kill a demon and will come back and they will have a good feast to you. So it was an everyday pastime. Krishna killing the demons. And these are amazing heroic pastimes that Krishna performed with his Gopas. So normally I do this session with this way back. Not me. And these demons, they appear from all sorts of places. Sometimes these demons also rear their ugly head within us. Really? Do they have an art? Do sometimes things go wrong with us? Do we do some things or we get some thoughts which are don't which don't belong to us? And we battle with that. Yes or no? Yes. Jai. Thank you. <laughs> I thought I was in the wrong place and I should be giving this seminar and just testing you out. You may be two good guys, angels. I don't need to, you know. Anyway, these things happen to us and sometimes we have, you've heard of this thing called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? You must have read it in your younger days. You know Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? You read that? I think it's a... Charles Dickens novel or Arnold Stevenson novel, I think one of them. It's a very interesting feature about bad side inside us coming out. And in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, he becomes another guy in the night. And he's an extremely brilliant, very good natured doctor in the day. Time. And uh, he's into great research. In the night, he becomes Mr. Hyde. He travels on his horse buggy, gets down in places, and with his cane, he once killed the local politician, only with his cane. Then he ravishes women, he beats up kids, all these things he does in the night. And in the daytime, he doesn't know whatever happened. It's completely oblivious to what happened. It's an amazing uh, story. It sort of relates. <coughs> Things that happens even in modern times to people, people are psychopaths, they're schizophrenics, they have multiple personalities and all sorts of things. We don't want to get into these details. When you go down that track in the material way, the analysis that way, we get completely lost. But here, there is an amazing parallel to that. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a whole discussion about all these demons. And Bhakti no Thakur is related beautifully to these demons and the anathas that they represent in our heart which stand in the way of us giving pure devotion to Krishna. That makes sense? So Bhakti Nathakur, he uh, gave us this analysis and Srila Prabhupada gave us amazing purpose in this Krishna book and in the Srimad Bhagavatam which refer to these things. Sometimes people think that why we are studying all these things to do with demons, somebody wants to read this narration. It is not less important than his dancing with the gopis. So here it is said that we have to, just like there are some soldiers, they think that Krishna, Krishna's Rasalila is very nice, but Krishna's fighting with the demons and killing of the demons, that is not very nice. But they do not know the absolute truth that Krishna is as good in any circumstances. Either he is enjoying the company of the gopis or he is killing the demon. That is the absolute truth. Though so these things should be understood. So any kind of lila, yat uttama shloka gunan, 
Leela, any kind of Krishna activities. If you remember by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, then you are liberated. Immediately you are liberated. You can talk of Krishna about his pastimes when he is killing the Putana, Agasura, Bhakasura. Both are the same. Some of the rascals, they decide that to talk of Krishna about his embracing the gopis is very good. And the talk of Krishna killing Putana or other demons, that is not good. That is rascal done. Anything about Krishna, you talk. Why couldn't the Gunan That's why we're talking about the demons in Vrindavan Lila because Prabhupada says as good as the Ras Lila. Anything to do with Krishna is absolute. And it's got some special connotation. This is described by Prabhupada Dvabhuta Sargaloke Asmin Daiva Asura Yedacha. Asura Stadviparya. There are two kinds of created beings in this world, godly and demoniac, those who dedicated to the devo those dedicated to the devotional service of the Lord. Vishnu or godly and those opposed to such service are demoniac. This is a simple, a very simple definition. So these personalities were analyzed by Bhakti Thakur very brilliantly. And Bhakti Thakur, in his analysis, he tells us that these are actually related to impediments in our devotional service. And each one of them, what type of impediment? Very deep analysis. It is extremely interesting for a person who is very interested in going deep into the process of devotional service. Bhakti Nautaku has told us, and this is described uh, in the next of devotion in other books, that we start with faith, adoshatya tatasadhu sangha tapajana kriya, then we we'll come to anartha nipriti sya tato nishta ruchis tata shakti tato bhavas tata prema vidan chanti sadhaka naam ayam premnaha pradu bhavi that is gradually one develops love for the Lord. But in between he goes through these stages. And in the stage of Anartha Nivridi, he struggles to actually get rid of all the Anarthas within his heart. And this is a necessary stage that everybody goes through. And Bhakti Thakur has helped us to find out what are the different types of Anarthas that will be present normally in conditioned souls and how those things can be removed and what type of situation do they represent. So we cannot exhaustively do everything. I have somehow Vijay Gopikesh wanted me to speak on this. It's a serious topic. So I'm trying to do it as lightly as possible. <laughs> uh, I, you know, on my first visit, uh, this may be a bomb to pick up. <laughs> but I'm trying to do my best uh, because we thought that this would be very relevant to all of you. And guys like this, you have to meet inside. So this is about demons and Krishna Linda. And uh, we will take up initially certain types of uh, demons and learn a little bit from what we need to do because we are trying to do determined devotional service. Who wants to be there? Without determined devotional service. Without determined devotional service, how we can attain that condition? So what is the use of talking in Turkey? First business is Anartha Nidhati Syat. Ado Shraddha Tata Sadhu Shraddha Vajana Kriya Kato Anartha Nidhati Syat. You adopt this means that you have got full faith that Krishna consciousness will save you. Then you live with the Lord who are similarly determined. Then you execute the Lord who serves. Then Anartha Nidhati Syat. Be free from you. These are the stages. There is, up to Anatta Nivriti, you have to struggle very hard with determination, and then automatically everything will come. Tato Nishka Tato Ruchis Tata Ata Sakitis Tato Baba. Up to Anatta Nivriti, you have to struggle very hard, Prabhupada Singh, with determination, and then automatically everything will come. Tato Nishka Ruchis Tata. So sometimes devotees get a little disturbed in their devotional service. And they become a little uh, down, depressed, down in the dumps, you know, trying to fight with their own internal situation. I call it their interior decor. Sometimes there are people talking about how to maintain our decorum. We also have to maintain a devotional service or internal decorum. And uh, we need to work on that. And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction when he gave the Nidhi Chamarjuna. Uh, Dr. Siddhanta Sasvim Chakul gave us a very brilliant analysis of that.
And Srila Prabhupada is a wonderful purport. And how it's very important for us to do the inside training. So today we're going to talk about one of them, one of the demons who is very prominent and famous. And she is Putana. Hari <laughs> You should say Hari Bol. You know why? <laughs> You're thinking Putana is that. I mean, I don't want to talk about Putana. But you remember what Prabhupada said. And more than that, Putana is a very special lady. And it's mentioned in the Bhagavadam. Any person who hears with faith and devotion about how Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, had killed Putana, and who does it less is hearing in such childhood past tense of Krishna, certainly attains attachment for Govinda, the Supreme Original Person. So important Putana is, Putana's past times. And what to speak of that? Look at this. Aho Bakiyam Stanakala Putam. Alas, how shall I take shelter of one more merciful than he who granted the position of mother to a she-demon Putana, although she was unfaithful and she prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breast? What did Krishna do to her? He instantly made her a devotee and gave her position in the spiritual world as his mother. So is Putana important or not? Yes. yes. Yeah. Very important. So therefore we are going to briefly discuss the story of Putana and I have asked for the Srimad Bhagavadam so that we will do a little reading on Srimad Bhagavadam uh, while we are you know, discussing this a few shlokas from there. Sake chari ekadot patya putana nanda gokulam yoshitva maya yatmanam pravishat kamacharini once upon a time, Putana Rakshashi, who could move according to her desire and was wandering in outer space, converted herself by mystic power into a very beautiful woman and thus entered Gokula, the abode of Nanda Maharaj. Okay. Rakshashis learn mystic powers by which they can travel in outer space without machines. In some parts of India, there are still such mystical witches who can sit on a stick and use it to fly from one place to another in a very short time. His art was known to Putana. Assuming the feature of a very beautiful woman, she entered Nanda Maharaja's abode, Gokula. Her hips were full, her breasts were large and firm, seemed to open in her slim waist, and she was dressed very nicely. Her hair adorned with a garland of Mandika flowers was scattered about her beautiful face. The earrings were brilliant, and she smiled very attractively. Glancing upon everyone, her beauty drew the attention of all the inhabitants of Raja, especially the men. When the gopis saw her, they thought that the beautiful goddess of fortune holding a lotus flower in her hand had come to see her husband, Krishna. While searching for small children, Bhutana, whose business was to kill them, entered the house of Nanda Maharaj unobstructed, having, seen, having been sent by the superior potency of the Lord. Without asking anyone's permission, she entered Nanda Maharaja's room, where she saw the child sleeping in bed, his unlimited power covered like a powerful fire covered by ashes. She could understand that the child was not ordinary, but was meant to kill all demons. So, just to rewind, Kamsa has discovered, uh, because he tried to kill the seventh child, and she flew out of his hands and said that, the child whom we're trying to kill is already born elsewhere. And then Kamsa gets very disappointed about his whole program, and he orders that all children should be killed. And he employs all his agents, and one of the expert agents he employed was Putana. She was very expert in killing kids. And so she was asked to go around killing him. Putana entered. By Krishna's arrangement, she entered Gokula. I just mentioned here. Because out of all the Rakshasis and all the Rakshasas employed to kill children, Particularly, Bhutana came to Guru. It was Krishna's arrangement. Because Krishna wanted to show her very mercy. And why did he choose that so? That is a big history explained. From the past life of Bhutana, Krishna with one stroke satisfies many people and does many activities at one shot. So Bhutana, it is mentioned in the previous life, was Bani Maharaja's some say daughter, some say wife. 
Bali Maharaj's daughter, she was called Ratna Mala. And Bali Maharaj obviously fell in love with Bhavanadev. His beautiful form, the wonderful stance, and his very cute representation. Give me just three bases of land, it's enough. And he washed Bali Maharaj, washed Bhavanadeva's feet. And in this way, someone got up, caught up in his whole thing with Bhavanadeva. And Shukracharya obviously didn't like it very much. And he thought Bali Maharaj was being disobedient. And seeing this beautiful boy at that time, Bali Maharaj's wife, Ratnamala, she thought, what a beautiful child. So wonderful looking. My husband is also very attracted to him. I wish I had this child. I wish I was able to hold him in my hands and suckle him with a breast, with a milk for my breast. I wish I was able to do this. And she looked at him and felt a motherly affection coming out of her. And Krishna noticed it. And at that time, Krishna recorded it as Bhavanade. But subsequently, as the pastime unfolded, she saw that Bhavanade was a great cheater. Chalayasi Vikramane Madhimad Buddha Bhavana Padanakani Chalita Jana Bhavana He Chalayasi Vikramane He came to cheat Krishna. He came to cheat Bhadi Maharaj. So he, she saw that the pastime unfolded and she, he became so huge and then took away all the property of her husband and then subjected him to great shame and humiliation and then took away his whole wife. At that time she became extremely angry at this person whom she so much wanted to hold in her hand and be a mother for. So these two emotions mixed together. And she thought at that moment, no, I want to kill him because her husband is lost. So two things happened when the pastime of Bhavana unfolded. At one point, she thought that such a beautiful boy. At the next point, when Krishna assumed his huge form as Bhavana Dev, Purukrama, Trivikrama, and measured all the area and then finished everything in two steps and stood with one leg up and said, come on, keep up your word, where should I keep the first step? She saw all this and said, my gosh. And then she turned around and said, I've got to finish you. Hmm. So these two emotions mixed together. Putana uh, came into being. She was Ratnamala from previous life. And she was simply born to satisfy these two emotions. And Krishna, that's why God, I come to my home. You know, after all the Rakshasis and Rakshasas of killing kids, you come and you can satisfy me. I just mentioned as soon as Putana came, <coughs> she saw them and said, My God, she's a deadly child. And then to kill all the demons. And it's mentioned about them as soon as Putana came in, Krishna closed her eyes. Proposed his eyes. Still so then his eyes were open. And then as soon as she came, you know, he closed uh, his eyes. Then that is also the reason is given for that. That Acharyas, Vishnachakriti, Thakur, and all of them are mentioned there. Krishna immediately knew that, oh, she's going to play the role of a mother. She's going to try to feed me and I'm going to try to kill her. I'm going to kill my mother. And thinking this, he closed his eyes briefly. Uh, and many other commentaries are given about why he closed his eyes. So he closed his eyes and then Putana came forward. On that very spot, the fiercely demon Rakshashi took Krishna on her lap and pushed her breast into his mouth. The nipple of her breast was smeared with the dangerous, immediately effective poison by the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna. Became very angry at her, took hold of her breast, squeezed it very hard with both hands and sucked out both the poison and her life. Unbearably pressed in every vital point, the demon Putana began to cry, Please leave me! Leave me! Suck my breast no longer, perspiring her eyes wide open and her arms and legs failing. She crowd, cried very loudly again and again as Putana screamed loudly and forcefully. The earth with its mountains and outer space with its planets trembled. The lower planets in all directions vibrated and people fell down, fearing that thunderbolts were falling upon them. In this way, the demon Putana very much agreed because of the breast being attacked by Krishna lost her life. O King Parikshit, 
Opening her mouth wide and spreading her arms, legs and hair, she fell down in the pasture ground in her original form as a Rakshasi, as Vratrasura had fallen and killed by the thunderbolt of Indra. <coughs> so she ran out of the house. She came into the house very smoothly. And then uh, Rohini saw her, Yashoda saw her, they thought, oh, such a wonderful looking lady. She must be a heavenly goddess. And they allowed her to go inside and take Krishna. And uh, no sooner had this happened, she was running out, dashing out, and she assumed a huge form and fell down. And Krishna, small kid, was playing to be in her dress. Putana was dead, fallen down. Came as a very beautiful lady, but with deadly intentions. And then immediately Putana fell down, and Krishna was playing very nicely making a few sounds there in between her breasts. And Putana assumed a huge size, you know, both of the inches of size, I think 20 months long, a huge size. And later, the Brajavasis actually got rid of her, the good hold of Krishna, and they bathed him in cow urine, they bathed him in the hoof dust of the cows, and then they gave him all these amazing looking uh, you know, medicines and uh, what do you call Drishti Parihara, they say. You know, somebody is giving you a bad look, these things are happening to my son, so they give you all auspicious items and bathe you and cow you and cow dung and all that. And Krishna took all that Abhishek Purikashi, sitting as a small kid, and he was a big one year old in his hand. So Putana, in this way, was finished. So Putana, Bhakti Rotako represents a saints that represents the single guru and the mind. In terms of our own self-improvement, pseudo-guru, guru who is only pretending to be so, not really a guru. Bhakti Siddhanta Sasi Thakur called them Gharu, means cow. He's not guru, he's Gharu. One who is simply interested in taking respect, one who is simply interested in taking worship, one who is eager to be recognized, one who just laps up all the praise that comes to him, and one who simply promotes himself and takes the form of a spiritual master and gives no real instruction for progressing his disciple in any way, but actually cheats him. That person is representative of Putana. Because Putana, how did she come? She came looking very beautiful, wonderful, her description is given here. And she walked through. She was able to walk through Krishna's house past everybody, including Rodri and Yashoda, and get up to Krishna. Such a wonderful disguise. The pseudo guru comes like that. He comes with an amazing personality. Some people physically very much looking like the mold of a guru. To come to India and show you some of them. <laughs> they have long beards, golden spectacles, long hair, brilliant shining saffron cloth. And some of them are thinking, yeah, that's that's old stuff. Now they are doing something different. They come in multicolored uniforms. <laughs> and they have turbans. And, it, and the turban is so casually tied. As well as just tied in the forest in the Himalaya. And they don't care about the dressing or anything, but actually the guy went to a boutique and got it done. <laughs> <laughs> because it's done so perfectly casually. You need somebody expert to do it. And then you got this drowsy look. I am in Nirvana. You know, you just woke me up from my yoga nidra. And therefore I'm doing something good for you. Then you have these golden spectacles and all these dingy Rolex watches and BMWs and everything together. I need it because I need to, you know, show off that I'm good. And guru means this. So these are people who also fool a lot of youngsters and fool a lot of people who are very immature in spiritual life. They look very good. They look like guru. Guru means must look like this. Otherwise, how can I you know, celebrate with this? You got to be like this. So the new age gurus, many of them are like that. They dress very casually. They want to look, you know, they want to look like the guys who are self realized and they've got a halo on their head and their feet don't touch the ground. They glide, actually. They glide. And some of them you can't even see their feet because the gown is so long, it drags on the floor like a bride, a Christian bride getting ready, you know, they have the gown and you're the best man holding the thing, the best woman holding. 
it's on the gurus of that they take up a glide because they don't want to see that their feet are touching the ground. Because you've got to be thinking that their feet are actually not touching the ground. And the halo, if you didn't see it, then you don't have the vision, that's it. <laughs> this way, physically, very, and, and Sputana was physically very, very appealing, so appealing that she was able to walk through. For some people are physically so much like the Guru, which the fantastic imagination you have. And then the second class of people who don't care about all these things, but they speak wonderfully. They are very good at speaking. And they don't care for all the looks and all that. You know, they speak so nicely, so wonderfully. They're so expert in speaking. And they can catch you. And there are some others who are scholarly, the Mayavadi Gyanis. They are so scholarly, they will tell you everything about the Vedic literature. They will quote left, right, center. If, if, you, if, you can, if you can come with me to Kerala, I'll show you people who know 18,000 shlokas of Bhagavad by heart. 18,000 shlokas by heart. Amazing people. And they give Bhagavad Sattaha. And hundreds and thousands of people are there. And during the lunchtime, after lunch, they smoke. <laughs> I see them doing it. They smoke. Then they have to take their cup of chai and read the newspaper. Then they head to farm and come back to stage and speak about Prabhupada and his teachings. And then they get back in the evening again and watch a movie. And then they, you know, then they do their sadhana in the morning. But they have a sadhana. I mean, they have to do it at the right time smoking, watching the movie, reading the newspaper, reading the Bhagavad, mugging up the shlokas and promoting themselves. So all these things are part of life. It's a strict sadhana that they follow. They don't do other things like business and cheating people and other people guys do. So they scholarly, wonderful guys. And they will finally say that, I mean, what is there, God and you and all that. I'm, I'm quoting one very famous speaker who comes on TV in Kerala. And people got angry with him after a period of some so many years. Because finally, during his Bhagavad Sattva, they have all this worship of Krishna. So one day I said, Krishna, if you want you worship, I don't think you will exist. I'll just do the speaking. <laughs> and then the people said, all these days you've been asking us, you're telling us Bhagavad, and you've been asking us to do all these things, and then don't say that. This is for people who are very, very immature and just A, B, C, D. They're still in school, first grade. For them, they can go and worship. I'm not on the plane. He said this, and the people get very disturbed, many of them. And he made them think that it's meant for you, not for me. I've already realized that I'm God. You haven't. You go and worship. And actually the whole Bible is meant for such people. <laughs> and he speaks about it. So you have amazing characters, very good speakers, amazing people. And they speak a lot of philosophy to you. But finally, this is the thing. This is Putana. Very attractive in terms of hearing. So many people go to hear them in spite of what he said, which I don't like. It's okay, that's the only portion I don't like. He says he is Krishna and he doesn't believe in Krishna. But everything else about him is so wonderful. As another stupid sort of people. You know, they like what he speaks. They like how he looks. So I go to him anyway. So there are lots of foolish people anyway. And you can say anything you want and get away with it. You'll always have some fans in his world. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can get up and go to the podium and speak something. And there are always some people who say, I like you. And then you can follow a fans club and I have a Facebook and then people follow me and they can go on with the guru. They don't know anything about it. So pseudo-guru, various types, scholars, good-looking people, rich people, influential people, all of them. Uh, and their whole baby of them. You can, you can, you know, you can see the net now. You can see all of them coming everywhere and speaking and speaking and speaking, liking them come. And you will get nothing out of it after all that. So, Bhakti Nautaka is saying, the Sula Guru represents Putana. Because what does he come for? He comes to kill you. He comes to kill your chances of realizing Krishna. He comes to kill your individuality. He'll tell you, you and God are one, you can merge into one, you're Brahman, you don't exist, etc., etc. He comes to finish you and Krishna together. And in turn, what does Krishna do? Krishna finishes them. 
Krishna actually finishes them, just like Krishna finished Kutana. So these have a deadly destination, that's also mentioned. So the other point is mind also represents Kutana. Because the mind is also your guru. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Does the mind give you instructions or not? Yes. yes. Do you follow your mind's instructions or not? Yes. 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 And are you not sometimes flummoxed as to whether this is the voice of the super soul or the mind? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, is the voice of the super soul or the mind? I often get this question. How do I know that the thoughts coming in my mind are the super soul speaking? and not the mind. Right? Does it happen to you or not? Yes. You have this question? Yes. Or you just accept hook, line, sinker, whatever the mind says and you go with it. No. We have this question. And many times you know it's the mind which is telling us certain things. Right? When it tells you things that are against devotional service, then you know it's the mind. And then the mind gets used to your This guy is become very intelligent. He's getting educated by his guru. And he's got association with Vaishnavas. So I got to shift gears. So mind also, it looks like almost another personality, conscious personality. So he shifts gears and comes as a great advisor. Yeah, you shouldn't do that, you know. It's very bad for spiritual life. For acceptance. You've got to be accepted. And he comes back and wears his nice dress and he says that, you know, I am your mentor. I am your publisher. It's right. Don't do that. Don't do that. And then you start, wow, it looks like I'm changing. You. <laughs> the the Prashadam and the association was having a change, and look at the thoughts coming in me. Very good, I adjust myself, and then I will see the mind. And the mind is amazing, and you can't get rid of the mind. Right? Can't get rid of the mind. How do you control your mind from doing these things to you? By intelligence. Yeah, by superior intelligence. Right? But even the intelligence, when it works, does it use the mind? An intelligent thought comes to you, how does it come? Without the mind, it comes directly from the intelligence. Does it come directly from the intelligence or comes through the mind? Through the mind. Thinking all happens through the mind. You get even an intelligent thought, or a foolish thought, or a very harmful thought, it all comes through the mind, isn't it? Yeah. So, it's very difficult to control the mind, because it is the same mind which is telling you that to control the mind. You get the point? It's a deadly enemy. That's why Krishna is saying, Vidhi enemy kavairina. This follow is a deadly enemy. You know, Atman eva Atman, uh, what is it? Vipuratmanaha. Uh, Vipur means enemy. So he's such an enemy who says he is the same person who's sitting, same person, same faculty here, the same. We should control the mind. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the mind, the thought. Right? So it's, isn't it tricky? I ask people to do a practical exercise when I do this session in another situation. I ask everybody to lift your hand. Lift your left hand! Please raise your left hand. I. Okay. Put it down. Raise your right hand. Good. I think you guys know your right, right from your left hand. Very good. Now hold your left hand with your right hand. Hold your left hand with your right hand. Possible, right? Hold your right hand with your left hand. Wonderful. Hold your right hand with your right hand. <laughs> Hold your right hand with your right hand. That is that easy to do? No. So how do you control your mind with your mind? <clears throat> Prabhu said you control your intelligence, fine. But still you should be very careful. That's why this is one guru, the mind, who is a very deadly enemy. He hides and comes in different disguises. As soon as you're spiritually oriented, he comes spiritually to you. <laughs> he comes with a spiritual disguise, he gets initiated in the air, and I'm standing by and say, Hari Bol, I'm your good friend. <laughs> you know, there's a saying in English, we can't beat them, join them. That's the strategy that people use. 
when you're fighting an opponent, you can't beat them, join them and wait, wait for your chance. So the mind immediately becomes very wonderful. He becomes, okay, 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 fine, 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 okay. I'm also a devotee. Just you wait. I'll get my chance. So, the very deadly. And therefore, the instructions that come from your mind are always to be taken with a pinch of salt. There's always to be bounced off somebody else who's not on the mental platform. There's always to be cross-checked with the Shastra, with Krishna's instructions, with Prabhupada's instructions. And then see, deliberated upon. That's why Krishna is telling Arjuna, Itite jnana makyatam bhuhyat bhuhyat karamaya vimrishyetat kase shena yati chasi tatakuri. I have given you knowledge, but vimrishya, you deliberate on it. Think of it from different angles. Yati chasi tatakuri. Then you do as you wish to do. Then it's okay. Even my instructions, you should hold it up. Look at it from different angles, become convinced, and then you do. See? So therefore, that's why the only that's called intelligence. Vimrishya means you deliberation of the mind is called intelligence. When there is deliberation happening on the level of the mind, that's because intelligence is functioning. Intelligence is functioning means the thoughts are controlled. Although there are all sorts of thoughts coming, they're flipped out, get lost, and focused. And you thread your thoughts together to have something meaningful that can be executed in practical daily life in society. Right? So the mind is surely one very important instructor. And the mind is the guru. Prabhupada also explained the mind and Krishna, the confusion I said, is it the super soul or the mind which is telling us? Prabhupada says that for a sincere devotee who is executing his devotional service, Krishna will give intelligence how to overcome any one of these situations. So Krishna gives intelligence and through the intelligence you will get a very fantastic realization. And you become so convinced this is coming from Krishna, it's not my mind, you execute it and you get spiritual realization of it and spiritual benefit. You know you can make the difference. Otherwise you discuss with your group, discuss with senior devotee and find out from them, this is the way I'm thinking, is this trend correct? Am I doing the right thing or am I getting cheated by my mind? Am I getting into a subtle trap uh, and chanting my rounds nicely, I do my seva nicely, I have a proper attitude, then you can expect that it's through Krishna that you will get many of your inspiration from the Guru heart. So Guru in the mind and the voice of Krishna will do Guru in the mind. In this way Krishna says that I remain as Antaryami Guru. I am the internal Guru and then Externally, I manifest myself as the Diksha Guru, Siksha Guru, Bhattama Pradashita Guru, and Vaishnavas and everything. And then I help that soul to conquer the mind and take it. So they get sandwiched between these two instructions. The mind cannot do much. One side is Krishna from within your heart, outside is the Guru, and is Siksha Guru, Diksha Guru, and other senior devotees speaking to you. Within that situation, the mind cannot give too many suggestions. It's trapped. That is why we always take association in a very dynamic way. We take association of those who are senior to us. We take association of those who are our peers. Sometimes people get stuck with taking association or giving association only to people who are junior to us. Because it feels very comfortable. <laughs> is that in a mental trap? I don't want to, I don't want to meet uh, he keeps finding some fault, he gives all his classes, demons and Krishna Lila and all that. Makes me feel very guilty and uneasy. I don't like to go to that session. I like to be with my juniors and the Bhakti Riksha. I will go and whatever I say, they will all listen to me. I am the boss. I am the senior devotee. And I don't like to go to the temple much. I don't like to mix with the senior devotees because they make me feel small. But I, along with my Bhakti Riksha members, I always feel big and exalted and I have a halo. So in this way I feel comfortable, dangerous, one-sided association, then your mind will take over. But if you have association that is dynamic, nicely orchestrated, under the instructions of the Acharya, then there's a good chance that your mind will not play the fool with you. Right? That's why we need that type of dynamic association. So this is also mentioned, Bhakti Siddhanta, as we talked about, is giving this very brilliant commentary 
He is saying that Kamsa is a materialist. He, he denotes the materialist. Putana is the aggressive empirical proposition sent by Kamsa coming to destroy the real religion of Krishna. So the materialists, they always have this fantastic empirical understanding of reality. The reality is Krishna, but they won't accept. They keep proposing different types of theories, different types of uh, ideas, understanding about what the reality is. Materialistic scientists come up with all sorts of propositions. Right? They don't want to accept Krishna, therefore they come up with all these proposals. So Putana is the aggressive empirical proposition sent to by the materialist Kamsa. And finally, real religion, the absolute truth, who is none other than Krishna, kills Putana. Wherever there is real religion, they will always exalt. If we chant Hare Krishna, if we follow Prabhupada's instructions, read the Bhagavad and strictly follow his order, you will always be successful over your mind, you will always be successful over every proposition that comes to you, which is not the reality, which is away from Krishna. All these proposals that come to you from different people, from different situations, they are all like Buddha. And if you keep Krishna conscious, and if you think of Krishna, and if you engage in devotional service to him, then by Krishna's powerful influence, all those Putana propositions that come to you will get killed. And you will always remain in the light of Krishna consciousness, basking in the mercy of Krishna. That is why we should have proper association, we should follow the instructions, reading Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, attending all our programs, chanting our japa, keeping the association and rendering devotional service. This actually keeps us alive and fit to get the mercy of Krishna so that any Bhutanas that come around are shot and dead. Right? Do you have such Bhutanas coming and attacking you? Yeah. Especially those who go to their workplace. Sometimes they are literal Bhutanas <laughs> and they are And look at that. Nowadays, you know, they are all executives and CEOs and everything. The Rakshashas and the Rakshashis. And they come in very nice proposals to you. I'll give you this. I'll give you this promotion. I'll give you this extra pay packet. I'll do that for you. I'll do this for you. Etc. And they fall into their traps. So, for those who are, uh, you know, challenged by having to meet to some of these Putanas, you should take special recourse to be advised when you have a Vakri Mahaprabhu. It's a beautiful shloka in the Bhagavad describing the false gurus. Dharma bhado, dharma siya, paradharma vanya chodi taha, upadharma stu pakandho. Dhambhova, Shabda Vichadaya. Religious principles that obstruct one from following his own religion are called Vidharma. Religious principles introduced by others are called Paradharma. A new type of religion created by one who is falsely proud and opposes the principles of the Vedas is called Upadharma. An interpretation by one's jugglery of words is called Chaladharma. Five types of Vidhar, false dharmas, very prevalent in Kali Yuga. These are amazing Bhutanas already led to this by Kali. And these are all represented by these flamboyant gurus who come in front of you. Either flamboyant physically or flamboyant by their words and their talk or by some other way and they dazzle you. And if you don't know the basics of spiritual life, then these false religions will take over and you will adopt them. But if you know real life, like it's mentioned, Dharma Projita Kaitavo Atraparamo Nirvatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu Shivadam Tartatrayon Muranam Srimad Bhagavade Mahamuni Krite Kimba Paredi Shuraha Sadhyo Krit Yavarutyade Atrakriti Vihi Shushu Shri Stakshana Brilliantly describes the real Bhagavad, you know, Bhagavad Dharma. That is Dharma Projita Kaitava. All this cheating religion, all this cheating dharmas are kicked out by the Bhagavad. <coughs> And that is why only Nirmat Sara, a non-envious person, can only recognize real religion. When envious is in the heart, when we can get attracted by false religions, we can fall a prey to different type of proposals that come to us like this. Right? So that is why when Krishna says, Sarva Dharman Parityajam Amekam Sharanam Raja, what does he mean? All these are cheating religions, throw them away. Maamekam Sharanam Raja, I am the truth. You just surrender to me. You see. Savai Pumsam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhakti Adokshaji. 
is the ambassador of pure dharma, the highest religion, the Bhagavad Dharma. He took Bhagavad and he went all over the world and strongly opposed any wrong philosophy and put the right religion in place. So this is the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Our business is to speak out the truth and propound the Bhagavad Dharma and kill all these putanas. But chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We can just finish all these poisonous putanas who will come in front of us. So these type of dharmas, <coughs> interpretation, word jugglery, opposing, uh, I mean, giving your own interpretation of the Vedas, and all these things are very, very prevalent. In fact, that's the most of Hinduism is that. 99%. It's only very few people who have got the opportunity to practice pure spiritual life by the blessing of Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. So therefore, Krishna is saying that you follow this, give up all other types of useless dharma and take up to this. So who wants to read that? You want to read? Anybody can see that problem? Yeah. Sambhashila Pakistan Saraswati that even though one may become free from the desire for fruitive activity, sometimes a subtle desire for fruitive activity comes into being within the heart. One often thinks of conducting business to improve devotional activity. However, the contamination is so strong that it may later develop into misunderstanding described as putinati, fault finding and pratistasa, the desire for name and fame and for high position. Jivaham, Himsa, envy of other living entities, Nisit Dachara, accepting things forbidden in the Sastra, Karma, desire for material gain and puja, anchoring and popularity. Lovely. The word Kutinati means duplicity. As an example, one may attempt to imitate Srila Harijas Thakura by living in a solitary place. One's real desire may be for name and fame. In other words, one thinks that fools will accept one to be as good as Haridasa Thakura just because one lives in a solitary place. These are all material desires. A neophyte devotee is certain to be attacked by other material desires as well, women and money. In this way, the heart is again filled with dirty things and becomes harder and harder like that of a materialist. Gradually, one desires to become a reputed devotee or an avatara, incarnation. If the devotee at all wants to cleanse his heart, we must chant and hear the glories of the Lord, Sri Krishna. 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 This is a simple process. Krishna himself will help cleanse the heart because he is always seated there. So that is why we are studying these things, because we know the inner intricacies and the mechanics of what's happening, how Maya is actually keeping you very tightly under illusion. The whole thing about this is contamination through the heart are represented. <coughs> one thing is contamination in the heart and one thing is Maya sending all these propositions. Contaminations in the heart attract this type of Maya. If you have a stake in Maya's world, if you want something out of it, if you have attachments, then you will get embroiled in these type of desires. So there are three dynamics that we will try to discuss tomorrow. One is our own condition in the material world. And the next thing is the illusion that comes out of that conditioning which we think is reality. And in between that, our desire to practice pure spiritual life because our intelligence has been awakened by hearing from a sadhu, from reading Prabhupada's books. So how to put these things together, how to actually take maximum advantage of it, and how to become a real, uh, what do you call, sharp 
analyzer of what's happening inside you and why. So no point just becoming depressed. The knowledge, we should fight it. And therefore, Bhakti Thakur's analysis of what's happening inside you and why it is happening, and what does it represent, what type of anatta it represents, how to remove it. These are very, very important lessons which all the world should be very interested in. Okay, this is for tomorrow. Right, any questions on this anatta? It goes on like this, I can only talk about one, two, three. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's very interesting to discuss this in detail. And how many do this in Karthik month? And they get to read the whole Krishna book each time. Each of the demons and everything. Then I put up some videos uh, and the devotees go back to the lesson for the day. And uh, they're able to put their finger on something within their heart that they can help either themselves or somebody else in their mind. Okay? Om Tat Sat. Any questions? Yes. Nityananda Pranadas. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thanks for the wonderful class. Um, my question is, um, how, how do we, um, because Krishna conscious is all about doubting your nature. For somebody, it might be like he wants, he's very active, he's a very active person, he does a lot of devotional service, but he might have the um, tendency to talk ill about others. But another person who might be quite, uh, uh, a very calm person going around his duty, but but he might not do, do a lot of devotion services. Does not talk with a lot of people. So how does how do we doubt tell our nature in that that sense? So are we trying to see that our nature and try and confining to ourselves, or how do we use that to pro, um, improve in our Krishna consciousness? We don't have to confuse being a sadhu with our devotional service as it is. We need to do the devotional service and whatever it needs, we need to bring it out to get it done. Like Arjuna was doing a very, very difficult devotional service. Prabhupada explains that in a, in a wonderful lecture. He said that Arjuna's devotional service was very difficult because he had to, he was saying, no, I don't fight, you know, I'm, you know, Three Sudhistra Shovashnaya, you know, this thing, that thing, relatives, everything. But then when Krishna gave him Bhagavad Gita and he understood, he had to do a very, very taunting service. That was to pull out his sword, pull out his arrows and chop people's head off and drive his sword inside people's chest and, you know, send streaming arrows that would, you know, cut people's neck. Doing all sorts of deadly things, and Krishna was standing next to him. Next, come on, get this guy. <laughs> you just imagine the devotional service he did. You imagine him just. Yeah. And Krishna was standing next to him, and the same person who spoke Bhagavad Gita. He didn't ask him to be a sadhu and go to the Himalayas, behave nicely with people. Tra la la la. He's going to fight, you know, how is he going to fight? What is his service? He's going to fight. How is he going to fight by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna? <laughs> He used to do that. It's not that he wanted to. But when it comes to fighting, you would be amazed what Arjuna did there and what Krishna was doing, both of them together. And Arjuna was at some time became very weakened in front of Bhishma and Krishna told him, shoot, get him. You can do it, it's my grandfather. Bhishma can't do it, I can't do it. And then Krishna had to get up and protect him and take it on him. Like all these things happen, it's not easy to do devotional service. The type that Arjuna did. And Krishna did speak Bhagavad Gita and Arjuna did not understand that we had go to the Himalayas and chant Hare Krishna, wait for the sunrise across the mountains and drink some clear water and fruits and berries. It's very artificial for Arjuna to do that. And that's the thing Krishna said, you don't do that. You get up and fight. That's your dharma. That's the devotional service I ask you to do. So different people have different types of situations and the call of them from Krishna is different. And so they have to execute that. According to their nature, they will be asked to execute it. And Krishna knows what your nature is and he will ask you to do that. And we take that and we do it. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, you know, 70 years old, he traveled all over the world and preached Krishna consciousness. And to so much of activity that you need to do at that age, he did it. So your nature, that's why we accept Guru. And uh, the 
you know, Siksha Guru, Diksha Guru, and senior people all you know you, and they will tell you, I think this you're trying, it's not working out very well, maybe it's like this, you can do this, or you do that anyway because that's required, I want you to do it. And then you adapt yourself like that. Prabhupada has many of his disciples do certain things and they obliged and they jumped in their devotion life. Right? Very new people. In America, you know, that beautiful book, I just was meeting with Mukundi Maharaj in the farm. He wrote this book, Second Avenue, uh, very wonderful book. In that, you know, just a few months of acquaintance with Prabhupada, you know, Malati Mataji and uh, Mukundi Maharaj and, you know, Sham Sundar, Yamuna Devi, all of them. And as soon as they got a little footing, Prabhupada was good one that no person. Swamiji, we don't know anything, we're just completely new. He said, don't worry, go Krishna will inspire me. It's such a heavy, you know, mandate. And in these times, if somebody asks like that, I'm sure that most disciples will say, I cannot do it. <laughs> she simply cannot go. So the, the, the gurus are so afraid of giving them, you know, instruction to say this. Would you like to, I mean, is it something that you like to, I mean, you know, the way they talk, they have some project there and they would like to go into the seva because like that. Oh, I mean, there, the weather is very bad in London. It's always overcast. Oh, okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. You can stay in Australia and do the deal. It's okay. You are a wonderful devotee. You are distributing books in Australia doing this wonderful, wonderful deal. Immediately. And what Prabhupada told them, you go. And they said to Swamiji, they don't have money also. And Prabhupada is not going to give any money also. He is giving off everybody else's money. And he is, you know, they become disciples and he tells them, go to London, go to the center. And these people, that the Swamiji is a spiritual master, which you listen to. And then Malati gets a job. And then Prabhupada says, No, you wait for two months. It's just now you, you know, got a child. So for two months she gives the child on it. At the end of two months she's carrying the child with her. The second she comes to see Prabhupada, they don't have money, they got some few hundreds of dollars and somewhere something more than God. And they said, We'll save money. We will not fly. We will go across the English Channel by some sort of boat or ship and then we get to London like this from across you know, the top northeast of America and from there down the English Channel like that. That's how they went. And before going, Prabhupada was so moved that these people are accepting my instruction. I know them just for a few months <laughs> and you know, maybe one year I, I, I initiated them and this thing and they are doing it. It's completely Krishna's mercy. So they were dependent on Krishna, Prabhupada dependent on Krishna, and was rich with Krishna consciousness. And all four of them come to take, uh, you know, blessings before leaving. And it's a very beautiful, heart-moving conversation, where they're taking blessings and Prabhupada is, you know, very emotional. That, you know, this is happening. They're actually going to you know, following my instruction. And Prabhupada is very moved, and they say, Swamiji, we like to take your blessings. We heard that in India, we can touch your feet and kiss your feet. The sadhu's feet. And Prabhupada's eyes become full that he stretches his feet. And one of them, I think, Malati or Yamuna, bend down and they kiss his feet. And then they take his blessings and they go full faith in Prabhupada. And become very victorious in one. You see, it's, it's up to the it's up to each person and his purity and his uh, desire to do something for Prabhupada's mission. They have power to do it. So it's not their nature to go and uh, speak Krishna consciousness in London. They would and they all have It's completely different from their nature. There's nothing to do with them actually. Actually nothing to do with it. But they did it. And that's how the Krishna consciousness movement spread. Because of willing people who want to serve Prabhupada's mission. So sometimes we need to do things like Prabhupada did, uh, and uh, it's not something that's a criterion only by your nature and what your likes and dislikes are on this. Sometimes we have to take that into consideration also, the devotee is very weak in terms of spiritual. Then the Guru also will not give him such an order. Okay, yes. I hope I've explained yes. Yes. Yeah. Any other question? Yes. Uh, probably my question is like, uh, uh, 
different parts. Uh, first one is like after the ultimate goal of life is uh, um, to service to the masculine role of personality, um, Sri Krishna. Uh, but why we are mentalizing? Uh, again, um, like even if we wanted to give up, we can't because we have been entangled in that that kind of world where uh, we can't really give up. We have uh, got responsibilities, family and uh, parents and all that. But uh, and and also like I have seen one thing like uh, inside the temple uh, that I personally felt, many of us may have felt, uh, the effect of Maya like uh, materialistic life is um, is just blown away. So. The moment when we are outside the temple, everything comes back. So the Singhashana is, is more prominent, uh, prominent outside the temple or like inside the temple is all because of Krishna that we are uh, away from all this. So how, how to solve this equation? Well, you can even get Maya inside the temple also. <laughs> it's that, of course, initially it's very nice according to the situation that you know, it's not that when Krishna was there on this planet, there was big Maya and Duryodhana. And right next to, you know, Duryodhana, Krishna was standing and he was thinking, let me catch hold of this person and imprison him. When he came as a messenger, that's what you know, Duryodhana was thinking. So it's each person's choice and their attitude and their desires. See Sri Rada Gopinath, But uh, all said and done, the temple is a wonderful place. The Supreme Lord resides there. And if we can be in the right mode, we can take advantage uh, by joining all the different programs, worshipping the deities, Harinam, Sankirtan, we hearing the Padavatams, tasting Prashadam, joining the festivals. Obviously, our time gets filled with Krishna conscious activities, and then Maya flies. So the same thing, wherever you are, you should try to do that best. At your home, you can try to substitute your other activities with the Krishna conscious activities. Worship of the deity, reading of the Bhagavad with your family members, and in this way, you can also turn your house into a temple. This is Lord Chaitanya's movement. You see, we cannot accommodate everybody in the temple. We don't have space for all of you, by the way. <laughs> we don't encourage too many people joining. It's only for Brahmacharis. <laughs> joining. Uh, you can have communities of people where you can also live around very close to the temple. In India and many places it's like that, even in the West I see in many places. You can do that also. And in this way you can get the advantages of yourself, staying close to the temple, taking part you know, in the programs, etc. So there are practical ways of achieving what you want. And you should do that. You should try to do that. You should take the step and try to do that. Don't think in your mind that material life, we are very attached, it's impossible to get out of it. No, it's not like that. It's not that. It's your mind telling you that don't try it, you know. Please don't try it. It's not. It's very difficult. It's impossible. Don't do it. That's why Prabhupada said impossible is the fourth dictionary. No, it's possible. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said that, Krishna has said that, Prabhupada has said that, and that's the purpose of the whole moment. That's the purpose of the whole moment. Have faith in that. Follow the process and you will see many things can happen by Krishna's mercy. On your own, yes, it's impossible. Mama Maya, Dhratyaya, Mame Vaye, Prapadyante, Maya Metam, Tarantite. On your own, don't go and do Gusti with Maya. It's very difficult. But if you surrender to Krishna, it's possible. That's Krishna's words. So learn how to surrender to Krishna with the time that you have and maybe wonderful things will happen to you. Okay. Right. Any other question or comment? Let me speak to you later. Yes. Ganesh. One of the first slides which I actually showed it said that Prabhupada said that up until the point we come to Anatta and Prithi, that we are like a task of the command. How, what, how do we know that we are in, like, you know, in that stage, Anatta and Prithi stage? Does the mind that he start to have a different or? So, Anartha Nandriti has occurred in the next thing you know, then you know that there is Ruchi who is faced. Then you know that you are getting all the time to the process. 
And also, it's quite easy to make hope. It's not so very difficult to make hope. That's why these landmarks are here. They have all these designs. All those mentioned in Kutinati, Jiva Dinsad, Shittachara, all that. So we know that we are still struggling with this Anathas. That is why some people think that the institution is the reason, the management, the problems, that is not that. They think that is the reason. No, that is what makes it evident, the Anathas. If you get away from that, the Anathas will not be evident, will not be seen to It's only when you perform devotional service, like they say in marketing, where the rubber hits the road. You know, when you actually perform devotional service, in the material world, against the force of Maya, that your Anathas become evident to you. Otherwise, you sit to the Himalayas and chant Hare Krishna, you will die like that only, and be born again with the Anathas. <laughs> That's what Vatsar Sri Prabhupada was saying, trying to be Hanya Sarku. And then slowly want to be incarnation of Allah. That's what we had a session from starting, starting with Dasa, uh, and then Prabhu, and then Mahaprabhu. First, he said Bhakta. Then he watches, so he's sitting everybody, Prabhu, Prabhu, and addressing everybody. Then after some time, he also gets initiated and becomes and watches other people telling me, Prabhu, oh, what's happened? So there's one more step for Mahaprabhu. You're <laughs> <laughs> God next. What sense he talked of saying that I have become an incarnation? This is regular thing that people do. Regular thing people do. There are so many incarnations on the roadside, cheap. So they say, you know, Manoratha. Manorate Nasati Thavato Bhaji The chariot of the mind, they drive and they can do everything they want. So, they have to be careful. These are, you know, simple. It's not so easy to understand. It's easy to talk. But when each one of us have to actually do it, it's pretty challenging and difficult. But then everybody has to go through that. Everybody has to find his own craft. Any other question? Yes? Yeah. Right, uh, you were mentioning that uh, sometimes you, when you watch in the category of uh, meeting or leading about the wishes, then we think of our survey, and sometimes we have that uh, in financial, we don't actually have that respect for the, you know, uh, the advanced bodies. So I was just thinking that uh, sometimes it so happens that uh, like, you know, we address the senior devotees because they are respected as senior devotees and so like in between senior and junior is there any concept uh, like peers like how should we deal with the peers or how, what's our approach to yeah them? you have seniors and virtues the three types of associations which are like a dynamic if you don't take three of them continuously, you're not holistically developed. And you have a need and a want. That is, you have senior devotees and you have their association service to them and their instructions and bouncing off and asking from them. It's very useful in learning, education, watching them perform, inspiration. Then there are juniors who very much respect you and want from you and while you giving them what they need you're also doing a very valuable service. And you feel that I got it from here and I'm giving it here. And it's a seva. Then there are peers who we can't play the fool around with because they know you when you're the same age and same things running with them. And they are good friends. And you actually open your heart to them. It's very useful that you open your heart to them. And they know you. And you don't have to think of a junior, senior, or anything you can speak of. In this way, there are advantages, at the same time, there are disadvantages. But the fear you become too familiar and they will lead to some type of offense. With a senior, you can become envious. Gradually watching, I want to be like that. And then you can become envious. And with a junior, you can be exploited. You can say, I want that particular type of worship and respect. You better give it to me, otherwise I'll curse you. <coughs> These attitudes can be said. These are all disadvantages. So, keeping this in mind, we should nicely practice our association so that we get the best for our Krishna consciousness. You get my point? Yeah. So, with peers, we have an advantage. 
that they know you and you can easily become friends and that that's your friends. You know, you can express, you can discuss more freely, open your heart and uh, they will be in a very good helping mode with you. And you will help them, they will help you and you can call upon them any time and they are with you. That's a good thing about peer, peer friendship. And also peer pressure comes on you when you do the wrong thing. That's also very good for you. Peer pressure is how people work in the world. Right? Do I ask you a question? Okay. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, uh, thanks for giving tips on controlling mind. And, uh, I am still struggling with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if uh, we do some things like which we don't want to do, and sometimes it, it actually happens like forcefully, you know, uh, we happen to do that and Later we actually feel that, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And actually that consequence affects also like uh, our chanting, next day's chanting as well. Like in the morning, when we are chanting, like we get those thoughts or what we had done wrong. But so, especially in the chanting, like how do we uh, control mind <coughs> so that we focus more on the Mahamantra? Well, when these things happen to us, we know that we are not great persons. This way we can be very humble. But we are stumbling. That's very good. It's arranged by Krishna. I know we are going too fast, he presses the brakes for you. You know, when you learn driving, I don't know, in India it's like that. You, you think, uh, you know, very soon you think you are great because that's the material nature. The nature of the material world is you should be very great. Policy will grow up so very fast. As soon as you become a devotee, you think I'm a devotee. Before that you are thinking I am great because I am a leader in this. You think I am great because I have assets like this. You think I am great in the job. When you become a devotee, you are thinking great because I am a devotee. So, this is the nature of the world. So, we don't like that certain things that we want and do are controlled by somebody else. But unfortunately, it's controlled. I'll give you an example of the not driving in India, you know, big L boat. <coughs> you go, I remember going in my days once, once or twice, and I hated it, I never went back. Because you sit next to you and say, yeah, because they actually got Go ahead, turn, wonderful, they're doing great. Now move, the price now. Then I want to press the accelerator. And go ahead like Formula One car, seeing the TDR. Boom, go. I'm just learning driving, but I feel that I want to do it. But you know, it's not moving. I press the accelerator, and my gosh, it's not moving. It's not moving. He said, why? I look down and all that. And he doesn't tell me anything. But he's got a set of brakes and I should go next to him. Like him. Without telling you, he just presses it. He presses the brakes. And he says, very good. Now we'll have, he confirms the whole thing. Because I hate it. I completely hate it. Chat, there's no fun with this. You're the one who's doing it. I pay you money to teach me and you're having all the fun. You're not giving me any fun. I can go up in two days. You're not going to. You like the money. <coughs> this is exactly how I like this. Like when we become even devotees, we want to map that same thing. I want control over it. <coughs> and then Krishna says, no, darling. I got the brakes with me. <laughs> You're still not a great devotee. This happened to you, right? Very bad. Then you become humble. You I thought I had power and control. I said, Mommy, Mahabharu, I still understand. I'm not even devotee. I'm low down. Uh, that's very good for you. Very good. To be repentant and then to know that I have exercised my false ego. In the domain of devotion service, and Krishna is giving me a rap on the wrist because he cares for me. Right? So you become more Krishna conscious when that happens to you. Otherwise, you will increasingly become Krishna unconscious in devotion service, which is very dangerous. So that's good. So you chant with greater feeling. Your chanting will be with greater feeling. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna,
Wann kommt du da rein? Wir alle nicht hier. Right? Thank you. Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.